Get Into Gate. This is episode 94. We're talking Stargate SG-1, a bunch of old school fans and a newbie to the show watching a uh, episode each and every week here on the show. My name is Mitch. Joining me, the full Get Into Gate team, we've got Matty, Yow. Brendan, Hi. Reese, yeah, and Lincoln. What's doing? Mate! That's all I had. We That's clapped, all it's needed, mate. We clapped Brilliant. in last week. Yeah, we couldn't yeah, be asked yeah. this I, week. I, it's like, I gotta work on it because you guys have all yeah. got your good thing going on, and I'm like, I, I keep it's 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 a work in progress. Hi so. isn't really great. <laughs> yeah, hey, hi. I say hi. <laughs> yeah, That's we've, it. We've, original. I mean, we've mastered it, but it's still not great. <laughs> 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 and, it, and it's taken him five seasons to get to you. <laughs> <laughs> We're here to talk about episode five of season five, Red Scar. We'll go to the old DVD synopsis and then uh, throw it over to Reese, our first timer, and see what he thought. SG-1 is welcomed on Katao by the planet's religious leader, uh-oh, who takes the reddening sky concurrent with their arrival as a sign from their gods. What he doesn't know is that the reddish colour is a reaction caused by the wormhole signalling the planet's impending doom. Yeah. Jeez, I, I, th- I want to say they did a couple of drafts on that synopsis. Like, there was a lot packed in. They obviously yeah, like, wrote it yeah. quickly. We need to say the word red in there at least two times. Yeah. In mm. synopsis. And reddening sky concurrent. It's just like, whoa, Jesus. slow down there. What does that even mean? They used a thesaurus <laughs> for that one. <laughs> Reese. Written by Robert Cooper. <laughs> uh, mate, yeah, bloody great episode. I mean, anything with the Asgard in it's going to be good. Mm. But we, we've, um, we've met a, a new one, Frere. Yeah. Frere Rocher. Frere Rocher. Um, but yeah, this is sort of, it gave me another sort of perspective on the Asgard, how when uh, O'Neill was kind of saying to them, oh, you're doing the same thing as the Gwauld are doing. You're pretending yeah. to be their god. And they're like, yeah, but, you know, our, yeah, but we're, like, we're, like we're good. We're yeah. good at it. But he <laughs> sort of, O'Neill sort of brought back, brought across the, the, the point where, well, hang on, you're really not um, benefiting them. Mm. By making them believe that that you are their god, and when they are ready, how are you going to tell them, or how are you going to break it to them that everything that they've believed for so many generations is just not true? And they're like, "Well, we won't have to because you guys fucked up, so the whole planet's about to die." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this is best case scenario. <laughs> us, by the way, <laughs> do you know how many planets there are with humans on them? We don't care. We're dying. Mm. Do you know replicators um, everywhere? <laughs> I, I that's what I realised here too is is how uh, fallible the um the Asgard in the Asgard are, is because they say like when O'Neill goes there and he's sort of you know appealing to them, they say uh, part of the um uh, the Protected Planets Treaty, it uh, they can't interfere um, on any natural disasters. Mm. That's what they cite. Mm. It's not a natural it's disaster. Like an insurance S- company. SG one <laughs> dropped SG one SG one like rearranged rearranged and dropped that that material into their sun. That's not a natural disaster. That's a that's a disa- if it's created by an artificial wormhole, how can it be a natural disaster? Mm. So I'm like, well no, yeah. it's it's nature. Funny <laughs> if that was their argument. Everything of Billy Madison's. Right? I'm sure there are extenuating circumstances. Oh, extenuating, extenuating. That's what he could have said. To the Asgard. That's the thing where, like, I just I, I like thinking of the Gould as you sure. Thor's not here. <laughs> as just bad what guys. Like? like I hate the idea that they've actually sat down with the Asgard and signed like a contract on like where and mm. where they can and can't, you know, take over and infestate and all that sort of shit. Like the idea that the Asgard could go and help save this planet by, you know, fixing the sun or whatever or moving the people around mm. or whatever. And then the girl would show up and go, ah, um, hello. You'll see here on page five, that was a disaster. Or subsection C. <laughs> oh, we're mighty crossover in the Gould planet. Yeah. Oh, God, we're yeah, going to bring some attacks here and get mighty angry yeah, with you guys. they know. The Gould yeah. are yeah. doing dodgy shit everywhere. Yeah. yeah. You know, the Asgard aren't really enforcing Yeah, because, the well, as long as we're, they're like, you know, like what you're trying to say to a kid, like, well, as long as you're doing the right thing, mm. you know, that's what, yeah. they, that's what the Asgard are doing. They're like, we're abiding by the contract. Gould are over there just like murdering people mm. and taking people over and they're just like, do you think the Asgard are going to yeah. ever check on our end Leaving of the contract? Even Samaria was protected under the yeah. treaty, you would assume. But then the Jafar have just gone, oh, let's try and go there anyway. Mm. Yeah. They're it. pushing boundaries. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, why didn't By they... invading. Why didn't, why didn't they put a, um, Thor's, uh, hammer. a Thor's hammer on... Yeah. 
on uh, Katow. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I guess it'd have to be called Freya's hammer and Freya doesn't have a hammer. Freya has <laughs> weather. So Vagina. I think the real question is why the hell is that planet on the protected planets treaty? Right? They're not even <laughs> worth what protecting. Are they what yeah, is what like going on? It's so out of hard to care <laughs> about them when so they're so shit. close-minded and it's just like, oh, no, we're just happy to die because religion. I don't mind like, Beardo really? for most of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. Beardo's right. He's just too nice to really you know, do anything. Like He yeah, reminded yeah. me a cross between... Russell Crowe and Al from Home Improvement. <laughs> <laughs> and the flying Definitely nun Al. with that big giant fucking hat. That he I had don't on. think so, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I um, I remember really liking this episode when I, you know, the first few times I watched it. But all I could find this time around watching it is how many like errors there are in the script, like things that they don't like f- like factor in. First like, time writer though. Like um, oh, mm. that's true. Uh, when like Elrod introduces himself at the start, he says, "Oh, greetings! I'm the flamen of the 39th Order of Katow." And so first I thought, mm. "Oh, so what? Are there 30 at least 38 other villages around the uh, on this planet somewhere, or is he like the 39th Prime Minister type kind of thing?" Mm. Mm. I'm like, "Okay, maybe that's what he means by 39th." And then when he introduces that dickhead Malchus, he says he's the chief acolyte of our order. So he's the chief acolyte of our order, our order being the 39th order. So there's at least 38 other orders somewhere on this planet. Mm -hmm. Not one of them have a say in the fact that the whole planet is being, you know, about to be destroyed and they're all going to die. Or evacuated. Yeah, or evacuated. (laughs) We are only dealing with this one this one little town it's, that just oh, happens, and it was a shit that order happens to, to be the closest one to the Stargate as well. Yeah, yeah, all the other orders were on their way. They're walking to the Stargate. Yeah, going, yeah, oh, yeah. we got to go find what's, find out what's going on. <laughs> and they just didn't get there in time. Yeah. I saw the idea that like, they're like, we got to evacuate this group. And it's like, what, how many people really live in that town? Like a hundred, conveniently. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we need to move them. They just come up to O'Neill or whoever and they're like, oh no, we've got 38 out of it. La, 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 yeah. la, 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 la. It's only a hundred. Like the 38 other ones just did a mass, like, Suicide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool Sacrifice. <line> everywhere. <laughs> Sacrifice. Yeah, we brought it back. We did it. <laughs> 38th time. Turns out those apples that Carter was holding up are actually poison. Oh, I knew and you'd like love that. <laughs> like the amount of time since Matter of Time where she brought up that apple that she's actually had to explain stuff, science stuff. And yeah. you're like, if only she had an apple. And this one, she just like, and this planet with all the foreign gear they've got going on, they've got beautiful red delicious apples just yeah. sitting there ready to go. What was that other thing? Like a... Looks like a passion fruit or yeah. something. Yeah, weird. by way of a an peel, onion. Peel. Alien yeah. planet, bro. Um, I want to know what that fruit was. Uh, alien fruit, bro. <laughs> Aman- Amanda <laughs> tapping herself. F***ing <laughs> hated it. <laughs> is this the fruit awesome. scene? This is the fruit scene. <laughs> Tell us about this. <laughs> Here. I have a personal issue with having to explain physics issues on Stargate with pieces of food. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do it with a donut in matter show. of time. <laughs> and I resented it greatly. And I'm not sure that it was necessary to have to hold up different colored pieces of fruit <laughs> to explain unstable molecules. So this is one of those moments where as an actor you just have to go, okay, I'm just going to forget that I'm dealing with fruit and that I feel like an idiot and I'm just going to give into the scene. Yeah, it was such a weird way to try and explain it. Like, because she, well, all she could have done was just like held up her right hand and went, "This is the bad stuff." Yeah. Left hand, this is the good stuff. If we put them together, they'll, you know, cancel each other out or whatever. And, and um, the sun will be. But okay. then Daniel couldn't have that great line about mixing apples and oranges. Oh, yeah, like so it was funny. Just, How so, so funny, funny Daniel? So she explained that Amanda tapping herself without sounding like a douche. Michael yeah. Shanks, take a page, son. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> you, you're mixing your apples and your. <laughs> <laughs> I just think for me as an actor that uh, blah, 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 you're like oh, I will never yeah. uh, carry a zap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a penis. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're all thinking. No, we hadn't actually. You're all thinking it. Yeah, yeah. mate, it's your uh, bread and butter. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> well, you shut your goddamn mouth. Dan- <laughs> <laughs> there was another inconsistency there with Daniel. I noticed is when he walks through the Stargate uh, at the very very or falls through the Stargate at the very very start. He pushes that little thing. Sunday goes. Oh look, some tiny writing. I didn't see that on the mouth. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. oh, so that writing was too tiny. <laughs> but the tiny, tiny writing on that probe from uh, Message in a Bottle, see. you could easily see that <laughs> from a mile away. <laughs> that the resolution on those mouth cameras just must be terrible. He just can't see tiny mm. writing when he needs to. What were they? <laughs> they were wiping stuff off them when they got out of that, when they came out yeah, of that. It's supposed to be the ice from the unstable wormhole. Because you know how they've, right. they they've took off the safety. bypass safety protocols, yeah. so it's shaky. That's why they came in. Yeah, that shot at the start, by the way, was oh, sick. sick. That was yeah. cool. With the rolling, they had the two stunt guys, and then cut to Daniel and Tilk kind of just running in behind the, the cameraman, just yeah. lying there. Um, which so I, they went through the yeah. sun the first time and brought 
But what, what, what was they it? They picked up a super heavy element yeah. somewhere along the way. Probably so plutonium. Every other time that they went through that stargate, it went through that wormhole, they would have gone yeah, through the sun, the right? Yeah, that's the problem. They, because the DHD have the safety protocol, they couldn't have gone back to Earth. If they yeah from from Katow, they mm. should have. They had to probably bypass to another stargate. Yeah. That's it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because oh. then you think, oh, okay. Well, maybe the planet has moved out of that alignment, and now they can get mm. uh, get make a connection. Yeah. But then they wouldn't have been able to fix the problem right at the end yeah. mm. when she intentionally wants to run the gate through the star again. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's, I think I yeah, explained it that way to myself, and that I didn't actually think about how that contradicted the ending. I, I'm like, oh mm. well, you know, if they would have travelled to this planet five minutes earlier, five minutes later, they might not have went through the sun at yeah. all. But then, yeah, that that. Doesn't yeah. work for the ending. That's why I've got but, so many issues with this episode. Well, my issue, I'm like, I, I know that why they do are they amazing bypassing safety protocol. Yeah. <laughs> why are they doing <laughs> that? Pretty it's important. Because you know otherwise, <laughs> the mission's <laughs> rough and they've got to hang around. <laughs> like, what do they do? <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> they're like, oh, we've had our f***ing check-up from Fraser. Let's go. Let's yeah. just get off. Let's get out of here. They, they, they're actually like you're just real divas by now. They're sitting in a briefing room and it's like, you know, they've got scientists in the room saying, hey, you know, we, um, we, we could fix the whole icing thing and the fact that you guys come out and some kind of come out sideways and all that, but it might destroy the planet. Um, so, and they're like, <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. we might not get a lock. Uh, yeah. Hello? All, no, we're all not. All these scientists. I'm done with this whole ice bullshit. So you <laughs> fix that. I don't, <laughs> I don't care if you lose a small country in this planet. <laughs> I'm not coming out with frostbite. All right. All these scientists, and they don't ask. Oh, I wonder why it's not working. Yeah. yeah. I wonder why we have to bypass safety controls. Yeah. To Daniel get there. actually hopes they do it so that he can try and fix it. Yeah. 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 You can You're talk Jack around for not yeah. being angry. Yeah. You're telling me this ancient race that built these like rock rings that just magically transport you to the other side of the galaxy put in this safety protocol, and you're just going to be like, oh, I don't need that. Yeah. <laughs> why, America? Um, <laughs> But for me, I'm like, I know they do these wonderful things, these phenomenal things with this show. Like, they travel through a wormhole to get to the other side of the galaxy. They, 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 they've they created black holes. They've destroyed suns, blah, blah, blah. But the idea that she just dropped, like, in the middle of a sentence, like, oh, probably when we traveled through the sun. And I'm like, hang on, does that not blow your yeah. Mind. Yeah. Like, right like, how vast space is and how far away a star is from another star. The, the chances that you would actually pass, mm. need to pass mm. through a sun to get to another gate is astronomical, you Given that think. the last time they got near a sun was when there was solar flares and they got thrown back to 1969. Yeah. Yeah, you think yeah, they'd yeah. want to steer clear of suns? Yeah, right. and like, yeah. I get it. Yeah, it's closer to its own sun so that it, it, the chances of going through that sun to get to that particular planet yeah. rather than any other place they visited would be greater. But still, like they just threw it out there like they passed through a sun and it was nothing. Yeah. Like It's mm, not yeah. amazing. Like, to I, I enjoyed this episode for the performances, like all the stuff that... Yeah. Um, um, O'Neill has in this, mm. like when he like starts wailing on Malchus, and then oh, later later so later on when he's yelling at Daniel about how he lost two men, that's all fucking phenomenal stuff. Yeah, but I just find the script itself was really poorly written. It just wasn't thought out well. Given that the entire episode is all about this science versus faith, and all these people have faith, but they have faith in the most scientific beings that we know to exist. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then right at the end, when Carter's like, "Oh no, we failed. It couldn't have happened," and then it gets fixed and then Carter's like, well, it was either us or we kind of left a little loophole there for the Asgard to secretly fix it. And then Daniel's like, well, we'll never know, will we? Mm. Yes, you f***ing will. Just go back to the f***ing hall and go and talk to them and say, hey, did you do that? It wasn't some f***ing divine intervention. It was us or it was the little f***ing grey aliens. (laughs) There's no f***ing... That, faith about it, mate. That stupid Jesus. pan up at the end going, <laughs> no, oh, it annoyed me so I, much. I, I, I don't think you'd have to go back. you just go, oh, oh yeah, that was them. Probably Asgard, well yeah. <laughs> well, well, well said. Well said. But that's the thing. For the me, Asgard are our f***ing <laughs> allies. This, this episode, what's this episode? What happens in this episode? Nothing. They go to a planet. But, there's a problem. And they go, oh, can we fix it? Nah, we'll go and ask someone else to fix it. Those people go, no, nah, we're not going to fix it. They then try to fix it themselves. Someone stops them from fixing it. Then it's fixed. <laughs> and they go, how did it get fixed? I guess we'll never know. Dun. That's that's pretty much every episode, isn't it? It's like they go to a a planet, create a problem, then fix it, then go home with nothing. Mm. Yeah, but at least we know (laughs) what happened. Like we see them actually do something. Yeah, (laughs) you're right. It is a we solve 
solved it show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. For the first five seasons, that is basically how good, all how good are we? We created this problem, but we fixed it. So. Uh, Getting yeah. good at this experience. Shit. But What's that's that? what I hate is just... We're going to fix your culture. <laughs> and if that... they don't create a problem, they just get captured. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't simplify this. I'm going to taint it. I love it. I love I feel it. Like the, is it in The Simpsons where they um the uh, the cookie the fortune cookies? And Homer like pulls out the fortune cookie and <laughs> yeah. says, "You know, you're going to meet a new love." Yeah. And then it shows the actual guys in the fortune cookie like making factory, and they're like, "Ah, oh, well, we're running out of those. Uh, you're going to meet a new love. Uh, stick in one of those. Stick with your wife once." <laughs> like that's it. They're just sitting there in the writers' room, and it's like, "All right, lucky dip. What's it going to be? Uh, create problem, solve problem, or get captured?" I really, <laughs> I really thought about that when uh, it was. It's on my Instagram if you want to have a look. But it was a couple of months ago. I just had a lazy day. Like I sat at home. I'm in my pajamas all day, playing video games, watching movies, just doing nothing, and I was so oh, lazy. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Sorry, me and Brendan just as married fathers, I just, oh, and I'm I done. Think, I think I, yeah, I probably jerked off at least twice as well. Um, but I was so lazy. Twice. Like, you know what? <laughs> probably a lazy I said, day. I probably said, at least. Twice. Twice. Exactly. You are so not utilizing your time, son. <laughs> I said at least. I was about to say. Obviously, he's describing the day before 10 a.m. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But it got to the got to the end of the day, and I was so lazy. It's like I'm not even going to make dinner. So I went. I walked downstairs to, to the um, place next door, grabbed some Chinese food, got a couple of fortune cookies. Don't they do cookies. deliveries? <laughs> <laughs> they're literally at the bottom of my building. Like, no, not lazy like, enough, I, mate. The I, I struggle to walk to my fridge. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I took the lift instead of the stairs. Obviously, oh, that's, that's why. Um, that's why I forced my um, wife, my now wife, to become a chef. <laughs> <laughs> forced her. Well, um, so I've got my I, Chinese I food. I highly encouraged. <laughs> I've got my Chinese food. Go back home. Crack open my fortune cookie, and the fortune. Cookie says, "You deserve a rest. Watch a movie." Oh <laughs> no way! Brilliant. Oh, well, bad. you did walk all that way, right? Oh, I was like, good. brilliant. I mean, I put on shoes. I walked downstairs. <laughs> I put on a hat to cover the fact I hadn't yeah. showered and my hair was all <laughs> mad. Was, was, dressing gown over thought, your open pants. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say I put a hat on to cover the fact I had no pants on. <laughs> <laughs> shoes, but. Uh, shoes, definitely shoes. Going back to that, I think if uh, the Asgard Treaty, I think if we went and asked Frere, did you guys put the shit in? They would have been like, nope. No. Because they would have... Yeah, that that's would ruin right. their treaty. They but would invalidate it. Well, it's, like I, getting, it's like I we're getting to dob on them to actually, the yeah, yeah. Yeah. Actually, Neil said. Well, we're not going to tell. Yeah, I actually just want to see like an Asgard puppet and they go, did you do that? And he like brings his like mangly finger up, just taps himself in the nose and goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> he pokes himself in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I don't get though. Why, why was it okay to, like I know they said, oh, we started to try to fix it so they could finish it. Like wasn't the whole thing... The, the Asgard didn't help because if the Goa will find out that we did it, then all bets are off. Well, it's still the same thing. If the Goa will find right. out you did it, mm. it, you know, it doesn't matter. Like, oh, we're just helping the Tari. And if they did it covertly, when, like, say, for example, that, that McLaren that we tried to get in there, say we missed and it was like orbiting the sun, yeah. and a f-ing cloaked uh, Asgard ship rocks up and just tractor beams it into the sun. Mm. Why didn't they just do that in the first place? 100%. Like, yeah. Why, yeah. why is it that we needed to supply the McLaren? For them to do it, it's like it's the same thing. They still would have had to have taken a ship and done something to the sun. Yeah. So what's the point? And then the fact that Daniel is like, oh, I guess we'll never know. <laughs> you, Daniel. I'm always on your side, but <laughs> you, Daniel. Oh, it makes. And we've come full circle. Yeah. <laughs> and the McLaren was so unnecessary as well. Do we really have to hey, like see the scientists now, and stuff? Now here, yeah. the scientists, right, is uh, uh, watching it. That was actually Stephen Orkin. <laughs> <laughs> Pre or oh, what? Well. No, yeah. Honestly, I actually I came away <laughs> thinking that stem cell research has gone amazing. <laughs> he went to the Family Guy clip. And yeah. 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 Why are we not funding this? <laughs> How long was um, I in there? Five minutes. So was the, for me that reeked of when they used a real general. A no, couple of episodes. He was an actor. Really? Because I just thought why him bring him in for no, no reason? No. He just seemed and to we me like never see him again. Really? I thought why why is that not a real scientist? They could have just brought in like who's whatever. working oh, on dark matter or something. Yeah. Yeah. Bring him in like he's just won the award. And they go, well, let's Bill put Nye. Show. Bring Bill Nye in. Yeah. Bill Nye is in Stargate well, later on. Yeah. yeah. So is Neil deGrasse Tyson. Oh, yeah, of course. Is yeah. he? Yes. Win. Oh, my For God. For the yeah. win. I know this. In the same episode. But yeah, because doesn't Carter says, oh, it's good to see you again. So I'm like, yeah. thinking back through the episodes, like, when do we see him last? No. 
Never seen him before, never see him again, never hear about the McLaren ever again. It's yeah, and they so say maybe one day you can visit the planet that your stuff's about to save, and they're like, yeah. <laughs> he ain't coming back. Yeah. <laughs> maybe he funny. had a stroke. And, the, <laughs> <laughs> and then the worst yeah. part. Right. That's why Jack's like, am I having a stroke, Carter? Am I? She's can like, I have a no, stroke? No, sir. No. <laughs> it's not funny. What, too soon? <laughs> <laughs> Give me a stroke. Um, and then the worst part is like all those fucking arrogant people on Katow. Oh, oh, I will limit you to one swear per sentence, please. One <laughs> per sentence. <laughs> all they're going to do is they're going to be f-ing Christians strutting around going, oh, we prayed and we all our problems were solved because we yeah, prayed. Yeah. Suck shit, SG1. F- science. Yay for religion. No, it's think, like, that's the yeah. opposite of what this show is about. Yeah, and I think that, that's that, why that's religion. I love that with But normally Jack. we go there and we like, there's at least one or two people that are like, Oh, maybe these people are right, and we need to question our beliefs. But every single one of these, kids, even fucking, um, what was his name, Elron, at a certain point was like, "No, our faith is our number one thing." Yeah, because Freya told them when they went to the hall. Uh, okay, to his, he told him to his face. But that's that's the reason. Like, as soon as that they blew up that ship, I I would have done exactly to the T what Jack O'Neill did. Which, oh, to that uh, oh, Malchus guy. To that guy, Malchus like, guy yeah. just. Oh, Throw your hat yeah. down, oh. grab him, and go. You punch stupid son of a bitch! And awesome. Pull the gun to his head. Yeah, punch him. Yeah, I forgot yeah. that he pulled the gun out and cocked. He cocked it oh, into his yeah. face. <laughs> he's like, "I'll end you." Yeah. You know what? Because then, when he when he's he ran like, out, you know what? Fuck you all. I'm out of here. You <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally would have. I'm trying to save die. your lives. We spent the last three weeks here trying to save your lives, <laughs> and you just killed two innocent people who yeah. were trying to save your fucking yeah. life. And they weren't even on SG11. We actually care about right? these guys. And then they danced around it like this would have been the perfect time if they had a better writer here to be like, use that analogy that we could apply to modern day times and say, oh, look, you can't judge an entire race by the actions of a couple of people. Yeah. And it's I like that is so. That all the time. Well, be, but not in this episode. Like they dance around it, but they don't yeah. have that really poignant line that we can apply to our modern day lives mm. about modern day racism and, and all that Didn't kind of stuff. Didn't they say you can't, you can't damn an entire planet because of one actions of one man? I think Daniel yeah. said that. Yeah. Did they? Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. What, that's, when, turned, when, that's when, what turned Jack around. When Jack's like, like yeah, all, right. all right, pack up, we're going home. They can yeah. they can just die. Daniel. But yeah, when he went and, and attacked that bloody Malchus guy, I remember like Jack marching up to him. I'm like, I was so angry. I'm like, just punch him. And yeah, then he punched yeah. him. I'm like, yes. yes. And then he put, <laughs> so the gun, put the gun to his head, to his throat. And I'm like, oh, shit. And then he, and then they're like, no, Jack, get off him. I'm like, oh, yeah, buddy, he's just going to jump off now. But he just yeah. stayed there, yeah. like, staring at him. I'm like, Malchus was so satisfied that he's, like, with, like, wide eyes and just still smiling at yeah. Jack yeah. because yeah. he's just yeah. killed. Like, he's a fanatic. And I was like, he yeah, believes that, that he's good. done. Yeah, and like and that. when Jack was just over him, just holding that gun to him, I'm like, wow, this is powerful, man. Like, yeah. he's he's really feeling this yeah. shit. Yeah, and given that we're talking last week about, like, how comedic Jack was mm. in those moments, then to flip it this week and just be so serious about yeah. it all, it just... He, he's, like, he really, especially after last week as well, he always says, you know, we never leave a man behind. And he always, uh, even when, uh, I can't remember what episode it was, but they had a ring in. Uh, in SG1 to, to come and help him. Um, and he was even, he, he gave a shit so much about this guy. Like, stop doing, you know, stop going out of your way to do your own thing. Like, I'm in charge of you. Oh, You're that not going to die. That was where uh, Dion Johnstone was in it before. With, That's um, right, yeah. Can't remember the name of it now. Rules of Engagement. Yeah, where they had SGX yeah, and shit. That's right. And then, um, so yeah, he, it, I love it how it just reiterates that he gives a shit about mm. his soldiers. Yeah. And he's like that pissed off that, Hit that two of his men had died that he's just willing to kill this guy mm. that, yeah. that blew that rocket up like that was it was an intense yeah, piece exactly and yeah. exactly like, what I would have done I'm trying to thing. save like so I'm here mm. like trying to save your entire fucking civilization yeah and then you sabotage it and kill these innocent people who are like under his command yeah, yeah. I like, would have loved to see him just just shoot him you know what I mean? And kill him. Yeah. And not not because that would be a cool thing to see, but just because... <laughs> his head blown up. Not only well. because of that, but also, you know, Jack O'Neill, as a as a soldier, uh, would have been through a shitload through his career in the yeah. military, seen so much shit, and mm. for someone to, to kill two of his, of his men whilst trying to help these people... Like it would have gotten to that point where he's like, I, I've, I've spent my whole career trying to help people, and then this happens. Like I don't give a shit about your life if this is what you, if this is how you're going to repay me. Yeah. And if he, if he did kill him, 
then I think it would have um, obviously added a whole another aspect to the story, but then it probably would have made all those people sort of question their beliefs and shit their pants, obviously. Mm-hmm. And then go, wow. <laughs> just, these- lose, just drop a kilo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these elves have come through the gate and they've just killed this yeah. guy. Like, yeah. yeah. Well, I would have loved to the, see um, it. The actual actors of SG1, like, you know, Chris, Michael, Richard and, and Amanda, they actually wanted to lose. They actually really wanted this episode to end with yeah. it not being a happy ending. This was one of the, uh, this was one of the first shows, and I think we should talk about this at this point. This is one of the first shows, James, that you and I had a long discussion about this, and actually, Amanda, you and I had a conversation about it too. Mm-hmm. I wanted us to lose mm-hmm. in this. To what? I wanted us to lose in this one. I wanted uh, yes, us not a- to be able to solve this. And part of my problem with it, and part of the problem with, with any kind of uh, franchise like this, is that there's four heroes right there on the screen. They have to be able to be heroes all the time. See, I disagree. I think part of what makes a true hero is fallibility. And I know you agree with me on this yeah. one. Is, is it's far more compelling to see the hero lose and still yeah. come back after the, you know, yeah. come back for the next adventure. What makes SG-1 work more often than not is that we, we're not afraid to show our fallibility. I just wish we'd take it that step further and, like you said, lose sometimes. So I, I, oh, yeah, that would have taken it to another level, yeah. I think. I, I, if, it was, I agreed. if it was done now, I reckon they would have. Like, yeah. Because this was very episodic television, they weren't telling these big arcs mm. back then. It's like if it was done now, they would lose in this episode and we'd feel the repercussions of it maybe next week or six weeks from now mm. where yeah. they something happens and they're questioning yeah. whether they can actually do it because of this episode. And you think that then you get... Simmons come back in in a couple yes. episodes time and rather mm. than bring up something like oh that you might bring back a virus it's like you destroyed an entire right planet face. what happened if that happened on the way back yeah. and you destroyed our sun and mm. you destroyed earth what happens then because then you're like shit oh, I actually yeah. do side with Simmons on this yeah. one well the More DHT than has before. safety protocols absolutely <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I agreed I whilst watching that I'm like just leave them there. Like if that's the if yeah. that's what they want to do, you've given them an yeah. out. Mm. You've given them an option, and they haven't yeah. taken it. You don't need to tr- keep trying. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I actually think them. it would have been really poignant for the final shot to like them just saying no, we're staying. You guys go. And the final shot yeah. to be where asked, Daniel says could still that. be the same final where shot they yeah. use where they're all huddled around. That's praying. what I mean. The, yeah. The, yeah, where they're all huddled around praying, and we kind of just have to just walk off. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. You fades just, to black. And you just see SG one walking away. Yeah, been sick. And the and the town still there, just in their in their prayer circle. And that was the thing. Fade it wasn't like the sun was going to blow up. Like it was just going to kill the plants, and then they would suffocate to death. Did they say what it was going to do? Did they say how they would die? Yeah, because Carter said the the sun's turning infrared. So, which would cause the the plants to basically die. Yeah, so they wouldn't have any food, lack of and then there'd be no oxygen. And, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure that's correct. But anyway, let's go forward on. <laughs> what you're right it is like. <laughs> well, they're still the plants like Carter used an apple, red and blue Brendan. light. Carter yeah, used no, an apple. Fair call. So it's yeah. yeah, but fair it's call. infrared. <laughs> infrared right. is the one below. Brennan, yeah. it's a very it's red. It's a very advanced it's infrared. Sun. Yeah, it's infrared? very technical stuff. It, there's infrared. a super heavy, infrared. heavy element in the sun. <laughs> it's <that's> changing it. <laughs> it's extremely advanced. It was yeah. plutonium. What are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. but you're right, they they give, compensated for stellar drift. About yeah. giving them an out, like that was the most frustrating part of this for me was then when they sort of had the last little town meeting in that very, very small little hall and they said, uh, yeah, it turns out uh, we can't fix it. So we've spoken, you know, we've, we've spoken to the uh, spoken to the gods and stuff. The uh, they've totally told us to uh, relocate you, and people just getting yeah. up and leaving. Uh, we've honestly we've spoken on. They've asked us to come and help you move. So we're saving you. Your gods want us to save you and for you to be saved. That's what your gods want. And they just keep leaving. And then old mate Russell Crowe just hops up and goes, <laughs> "Well, if it's the will of our gods to let us die, we should just die." And I'm like, "Hey." What have you been listening to? <laughs> right. exact opposite he literally of what he just said, said. Like five think... times. Hey, your gods want you to live and leave with us so that you can live. And you're like, oh, they want us to die. Yeah. My life. And I think Daniel. <laughs> you. I, think Daniel I think Daniel. I think Daniel fucked up that pitch because yeah. when he said, "Oh, we'll take you to another world," that's yeah. when they started lifting up, like standing yeah. up and leaving. It's like he could have just said, "Come with us." Yeah, yeah, to yeah, your yeah. Next he didn't world. have to say. Yeah, just come with it. They didn't know the annulus is a fucking you know goes to all these different worlds. They think yeah. it goes to the gods. Could have yeah. easily have just said, "Come with us." You can meet the gods yourself, yeah. right? Yeah. You can ask them in person. I know it's this and that, but Frere, we've, we've found a way. Frere wants us to take you with us. Yeah, you can be with Frere. You know, and they yeah. would have jumped. Yeah. And they wouldn't know how to get back. 
Yeah. No. Well, no they could have just taken them to another planet and resettled them somewhere. Yeah, so and they control and crystal and DHD, this there. stuff, yeah. yeah. Jack can just start shooting everyone yeah. there. Yeah, exactly. You know what? Or, 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 <laughs> You'll see Freya. <laughs> while you, yeah. You'll see Freya. <laughs> <laughs> while touching see on death. that, the dude, see that, death. the dude that he put the gun to, who's that dickhead's name? Malchus. 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 Dickhead. So I reckon that would have been the perfect time for him to use that pouch poacher. Oh, you know, yeah. the, the, oh, yes. the, the gold No, forget that. Yeah. Get, yeah. get Teal's wing cannon from last week and jam that oh. into his stomach and then fire it. <laughs> stomach? <laughs> <laughs> so lazy. <laughs> That's the opposite of what I thought you were saying. Um, <laughs> Reese, now that you have the uh, DVDs, what you can actually do is in the special features for this episode, um, Amanda Tapping actually does like, it's like a 10 minute video. It's a video diary. It's, it's a day in the life of Amanda Tapping. On location for this nice. episode, and it's pretty interesting. So you, yeah, should, it is um, good. you should definitely check that out. I love it how um, they just put a filter over the screen and be like, "Oh, this yeah. is such a different planet." It's a different planet. So mm. I love it. Not a big deal. Yeah, it's like it's like what Miami looks like in the Bad Boys movies. Just put the yellow filter on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh no, it's hot. harsh Look sun. How hot it is. Yeah. Or on Breaking Bad, whenever the, it's just like yeah, they, yeah. Put that yellow. Oh, yeah, the afternoon yeah, in the- Breaking Bad, so yellow. Yeah. Yeah, especially when you're cooking meth. So yellow. <laughs> I, I wish they would have had more fun or we could have even had fun with it. I was, I was going to record it and, and, and just, it, God forbid we play any theatre sports uh, for our patron listeners. You can um, check that out. But um, when they went down and they saw, uh, what's sorry, what's the Asgard God called again? Frey. Frey had his little recording. And I thought, how many have those has he done? Because if <laughs> yeah. they, yeah. The old mate Russell Crowe and, and, and Dickhead... Um, <laughs> It wasn't yeah. the first time they'd went to seek his counsel. Yeah. It wasn't like they freaked out when they got, you know, um, yeah. transported. And they're asking him different questions, presumably, than last time, and he's giving them the same responses. So how stupid are these guys where they're like, oh, mate, honest, um, uh, we got someone who's really sick. Uh, we're, our water has run out. And he's like, I will one day go on a great ship and yeah, fight yeah. a battle. <laughs> Till then. Yeah. Until then, fight your own battle. It's like, uh, ah, it's... damn it. Next time you go up there and it's like, my wife's cheating on me. Um, I don't really know how to. I'm sorry, this is such a personal thing, but I, I wanted to pray to you and speak to you personally. One day I will go and fight a great <laughs> battle. But yeah. until yeah. then... And they just keep going, man, he's, I mean, he's so wise. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. that's like, religion. And it's it. like, when, Say 10 Hail Marys and f*** off. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, well... Hell, <laughs> and then, why didn't they... Next. Why didn't they... <laughs> Why didn't they just bring Elrod with them? Like they they went to the Hall of Wisdom and saw the hologram yeah. when it was just the like Elrod, Malchus, uh, Jack, and Daniel. Yeah. And then later on, all of SG One goes oh, we, except for um, <sighs> Teal. They bring Carter so that she can deactivate the hologram and get in contact with the real Frere. Yeah. Why didn't they just bring Elrod with them? Mm. No, so that they would they could they see what Frere looked like. Up. But they weren't. Frere wouldn't have known. Frere didn't know who they were until Frere transported in, like yeah. with the hologram. At which point he sees that it's SG One. At which point, if Elrod was there, he would have seen what Frere actually looks like. <laughs> Instead sorry. of that stupid thing later on, where where right, Jack's like, yeah. "Oh, they're three feet tall and they've got toothpicks for arms." <laughs> yeah. What? Well, I like they said that that stage. He goes, "Oh, you know, you can't change." You know, he goes, "Don't worry, your secret's safe." Because at that stage, they weren't as in dire need as what they were come the end of the episode, where you like where, where O'Neill said. I'm going to tell them the truth. Screw yeah. it. So I like that they didn't, but I like the idea that, like you said, that he didn't know who was calling him until uh, until he transported in and he saw it was SG-1. I like the idea that it had have been some of the natives that he then sees it's him. He's like, oh, shit, and quickly like grabs like a <laughs> mask yeah. of, of the big Thor-looking bloke, the, the Viking yeah. guy. Yeah. Oh, helmet on. I am your god. Um, uh, with his toothpick arms. Oh, sir, Sail sir. down oh, a river oh. and come and fight your own battles. <laughs> like some kind of Scooby-Doo villain. Yeah. Would have been fantastic. But that was pretty easy for Carter to do that, hey? Like, yeah. she just pulls that jaw out. Oh, mate, she fails. Just, you mate, don't believe in bullshit. I you can just go yeah. around it and go straight to have science. A look. <laughs> <laughs> Frere's right. just like, oh, how did she find that? It was so well hidden. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only thing in the room. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you yeah. think they'll find it? It's literally the only like box-looking yeah. hole in the wall, but yeah. sure, with yeah, a but button. We'll put the hologram yeah. in front of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> never know. <laughs> ignore this. Ignore this. <laughs> <laughs> That culture, they only know to pull things from the bottom, and if they'd known just to pull things from the top, <laughs> would it come down? They're like, "Oh my god, what is this?" I like yeah. too their their first meeting. Like it just shows not the arrogance because they don't go in with any ill intent, but they are travelers. They do carry weapons, 
and obviously they assume that everyone speaks English because they do just because it makes it, the, the episode's 10 minutes shorter. Mm. But <laughs> like they come out of the gate and talk about how rough the landing was or whatever. And then old mate like sticks his head out of the bushes like some creep. Got, what was he doing in the bushes? <laughs> With but anyway. that giant hat on. Yeah, so it's like he's already right. got to have half his hat <laughs> out being exposed before he can yeah. get his face out So he's there. curious. And then That's O'Neill's like, hey, son. who are you? <laughs> out of there. Come out now. And I'm like, you are foreign to this planet, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. And you're coming up and asserting authority with a weapon in this guy's face yeah. and America. also speaking America. your yeah. native language, hoping that this guy understands you. Yeah. Yeah. And he does. And immediately goes, oh, you guys are definitely help. Yeah, I'll take his back to my village. Yeah, I thought no wonder was... no one believed him. He's I like, thought... oh, the village idiots brought another pack of <laughs> this guy again. I thought it was good how Jackson ran up and he's like, we're not here to hurt you. Yeah, like yeah. he mm-hmm. recognised that. that... Mm. But at the same, like, at the same time, I wish when... They went to the village and then Malchus come up and he's like, oh, you guys are evil. This is because of you. O'Neill should have stepped up to him in his face and gone, what are you saying? (laughs) None of this would have been happening. Let me go ahead and clean and go, oh, no. Just zat him. Discharged. Oh, your head fell off. Yeah. (laughs) I would have liked to have just been real. Or or even just knock him out and just go, walk. (laughs) (laughs) Straight up. It's like, you're (laughs) evil. This is your fucking life. Say it again. Anyone else got something to say? Yeah. <laughs> then f- <laughs> so. Do you know who I am? He could have even treated him worse. Love the idea that he like had that gun. He's cocked it. He's in his face. And he's like, I would shoot you right now, but it would be too much paperwork. Yeah. Yeah. You're I, not worth yeah. the bullet. I kind of wish they would go in more militant and like knowing, especially a culture like that, where they're like, clearly they've got nothing on us. So let's go in hard so we don't have to kind of talk bullshit with them mm. yeah like, we're here we're the boss sit down what's going on yeah, yeah we're yeah. taking control please yeah. don't blow our rockets up yeah oh, I feel like I feel like that's a bit white supremacist isn't it like you've still got to respect their culture to a certain degree you can't you know, it's not no. until they make a <laughs> not really because if they if they had have gone <laughs> like in you thought about it nothing to do with so, race so basically you're white. saying well, it's just basically what the, what the first fleet did the originals alright let's just you know, I didn't say just, kill oh, anyone let's not, let's not take said, it back to race I didn't say kill anyone I just said oi Look what we can do. Yeah, like, like you said, punch if, old mate in the face. Yeah. I, um... Oh. Oh, shit. Oh. Easy stations. Fencing, stand by. Airman. Yeah, I'm on the gun. Close the iris. <laughs> Got my staff out. <laughs> what else Hi, is guys. Me? It's Ashley OG. So what I was going to see if I could find the cello sheet music of the SG-1 theme to start this off with, but all I could really find was... The first page um, that sounded quite a lot like the piano that Dan Pucci's voicemail had at the beginning, and I really couldn't be asked figuring out which line had the melody the whole time. And I can't really sing, so this is already kind of meh compared to Dan's. Not that it's really a competition. Um, Not at all. I haven't Absolutely. really got that much to say about the four and a bit seasons you've done so far. Most of what I th- really thought about it was being said in the, either the Patreon or Facebook comments or in the freaking novels that my emails became, as you've probably seen. <laughs> and we love um, them. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so, so much for the SG1 patch. I still don't really know what to put it on. It's just kind of sitting there waiting Neither patiently to be stuck on something. And I haven't really got that much to put it on anyway, but we'll see if that changes in the future. And it's going to look really good. Absolutely. Looking at the episode order of this season, I'm actually really excited for the second half and the mid-season two-parter. I feel like it's much better than the first half, but I think Agreed. I already know what's going to be my horseshit tour of the season <laughs> and maybe the next see, next two up from that. Um, but it's still early in the season, so we'll see how things go. And that's pretty much it. I'm still loving the podcast, obviously. I still go back to Cold Lazarus every so often for taking a dump through the wormhole. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You can write that down, Cold Lazarus. um, Have a good rest of the recording session, and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye. Oh, Oh, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. Thank you, OG. You know, the funny thing was, I was trying to to, uh, figure out and search for where we were talking about taking a dump through... But and then I got to Cold Lazarus it. and I'm like, nah, it can't be that one because that's the one where we get all deep and emotional about the little kid. <laughs> <laughs> and so it took me ages to find it because then I finally listened back and we're just and then all of a sudden, yeah, what if you minute. took a shit through the world. Love it. So if you do want to send us through a voicemail, just uh, yeah, record it on your phone or whatever, and email it through to us at uh, getintogate at gmail dot com. Right, now that I know that, I've got to start using that in just my everyday. Vocab, just like at work, just you know, if someone goes, "Where are you going?" Just going to take a cold Lazarus. <laughs> <laughs> at yeah, least I'm really telling them that they don't <laughs> actually <laughs> know. Absolutely. What's that, a cold Lazarus? Listen to the podcast, yeah. mate. Yeah. Something the honey badger <laughs> would use. Yeah. 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 
Thanks, OG. That's great. That's Thanks, awesome. Ash. Well done. And, you know, she didn't want to compare herself to Poochie, but she's not as mental as Poochie, is she? So no. oh, I'd be worried if we, had, would agree. If, if we had more than one Poochie, I'd be worried. That's the thing. Like, you imagine if every voicemail we get in and it's just like they're all Poochies. Basically, yeah. it's like, whoa, who are we appealing to? But thankfully, we just got yeah, one Poochie. She didn't just <laughs> randomly start singing a song halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> I did, oh, that's um, a different song. <laughs> I did ask when um, Dan Poochie sent his um, voicemail through or his off-world activation through, mm. um, When's the Dan Pucci podcast started? He's actually started one. Really? Bullshit. Yeah, he's wow. got one episode out. Oh, um, uh, I'm going to have to have a listen. Yeah, it's uh, you'll actually like it. They do talk about Star Trek. Nice. It's uh, I say they, it's Dan and Dan, his mate Dan. Oh, sweet. So, yeah. Oh, for a second, it, yeah, Pucci, I honestly thought it was nothing. him talking yeah. to himself. Because he, <laughs> oh, I would not put, put that past him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ten, I think it's called Ten Forward. Is that a Star oh, Trek thing? Yeah, yeah. that's the, uh, it's from Next Generation, yeah. There you go. So the uh, bar in the ship. If you uh, if you like a bit of Poochie, as uh, featured on our last episode, well, he, he knew that you guys wouldn't let me do a Star Trek podcast, so I guess he had to make his own. <laughs> you can do it, mate. We're not stopping you. Can do you. it. <laughs> yeah, but even Dan had to get a friend to come in and do it with him. Oh, right? mate, what's Low Pitch doing? <laughs> <laughs> that would be. Uh, I'd listen Jesus. to that one. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. No one seven of nine joins the cast. You don't want to know what Low Pitch thinks about seven of nine. I, I think it'd be a good um, debate of perspectives. Oh, there'd be a lot of debating going on, I tell you that. <laughs> Massive ones? Just mass debates. <laughs> Just mass debates all the time. Um, getting high pitch, back high to pitch it. and low pitch just mass debating <laughs> each other. Getting back to Red Sky, how um, that high council meeting, or go back to when mm. O'Neill first, when they first saw Frere, and Frere's like, oh, you are... Jack O'Neill, we named a ship after you. I'm like, oh, you've heard of him, have you? Yeah, <laughs> that you is know, awesome. You know what I'm about. And then they went to that high council chamber. I'm like, it had all those seats. And I'm like, holy yeah, shit, this sick. is awesome. And then they all come. And then there was there four of them? Four yeah. of them. Yeah, they couldn't Just even, get the, six, couldn't even get the full seven. Like, there's yeah. like seven seats there. And they're like, oh, it's so Neil. He's not even worth like yeah. all seven. We'll just. Whoever, oh, I mean, it whoever's was pretty. free, whoever's free, just, co- just yeah. come and you come know, on sit down. in here for a minute. One of them was just the cleaner that was there. Yeah. Well, we funny. need numbers. Um, in the, in <laughs> Dave, the pop- Dave, come in. <laughs> Put this medallion on. Yeah, in the, good. In the, to, them, <laughs> to them, we all look alike, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Well, We've only got four puppets. No, three. They've only got three, actually. Martin Wood points out that they've only they got three, and the one up the very, very end on the left that doesn't actually say or do anything. Dave the Cleaner. Is the, well, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the original one from the fifth race, which is their, you know, Mark One puppet right. that sort of doesn't look as good as, as the yeah. others. And then they've yeah they've got Mark Two and Mark Three as their as their three puppets. Nice. That's why it kind of just sits always in the, in the background of the shots. They should have and doesn't names. say anything. Yeah, sh- but I, yeah. surely. I do yeah, like Mark in, One, Mark Two, and Mark Three. But Maybe in the show they should Dave. Is. Dave yeah. is a good one. <laughs> You've got you. Thor, Frey, and Dave the Cleaner. <laughs> 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 but he's actually like, well, they all speak a little bit like Shanksy. Apparently, you know, he that the Dave the Cleaner actually speaks like Seth Rogen in Paul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another Paul reference. Wow. This is Am awesome. I going to get overtime for this? Um, apparently. They were there was obviously Frere, there was the Grand Archon, who was the guy in the middle with the necklace, mm. and then there was the Peace Archon and the War Archon. Whoa. Apparently. Whoa. Archon. I like that. Or as Martin Wood calls them, the Archon. And I'm like, no, I think he's mispronounced that. Archon. <laughs> Turns out um, Dave's like bloody just a genius, like Matt mm. Damon. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, shit on the wall. They're like, come in, and then he knows the whole treaty back to front. That's what happened. That's <laughs> we've just written the episode. Like there Frere's like, oh, can't do this, I don't know how to do it. Off-site, well, we're there, yeah. like, punching people for destroying rockets. <laughs> Old Dave the Cleaner walks in, puts another, like, you know, algorithm up on the board. Yeah. Frere sees it, they fix the sun. Yep. Or, or Dave, Dave just goes and does it himself. Yeah. Oh, no, yes. he just walks in and says he's Heimdall because they all look alike. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Racist. Yeah, yeah he, 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 just, he, he just... He leaves his missile and he's just like, all right, see you, babe, catch you later. Hi, I'm Frere. And they're like, <laughs> really? Oh, cool. He's like... We got away with that pretty good. Didn't we? <laughs> I, didn't even, I didn't even wear a disguise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I can get a good paycheck coming my yeah, way yeah, now. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting Heimdall money. I'm going home to watch a movie. <laughs> <laughs> good Dave hunting. <laughs> Dave, no, Dave I'm hunting. going. I'm going home to watch Minions. I like the yellow ones. <laughs> Have you seen the- this new movie called E.T.? <laughs> Shit is hectic. I was thinking Dave ended up being the alien that lives with the family in American Dad. 
<laughs> Roger. Oh, Roger, he's actually Dave. Nah. That'd be brilliant. Actually, Roger does kind of look, he looks like a fat Asgard. I was about to say, like an Asgard <laughs> yeah. came and discovered Pizza Hut. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah he's, sure. like, he's like a fat bisexual Asgard. That's brilliant. <laughs> I was just thinking, imagine if Tilk watched Independence Day, the movie. Oh. And he's like, would he, would he then be cheering for the Tari to be like, yeah, you know, defeat them? Or would he be, would it, would it open his mind and be like, oh man, I've invaded so many planets like this. Yeah, is and this we did what it way like? better. Yeah. I, I think <laughs> it's, I, taking, it's <laughs> taking them ages to kill yeah, these humans. <laughs> I think if he watched uh, Independence Day, yeah, he'd definitely be on the side of the aliens. But then if you watched Independence Day 2, he'd definitely be on the side of the humans. He'd be like, <laughs> oh, f- me, I should have stopped. I shouldn't have watched this piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen number two. Oh, oh man, don't bother. number two. Yeah, I wouldn't bother. It's kind of not amazing. even old mate can save it. Well, I think the only reason you li- you do watch it so you can listen to our Get Into Geek podcast because Jaws featured on that review, mm. and <laughs> we tore that movie seven mm. new assholes. <laughs> seven. Yeah, I want to say alien. more than one each. It's an it's alien number yeah. of assholes. <laughs> that was a tentacle in each asshole. Oh, <laughs> God, what a heap of shit. It's time to find out it. Oh, Reese has been paying, paying attention. attention. For new listeners, we're testing Reese on his Stargate knowledge. He's the newbie of the uh, the show. So you got five questions here, mate. All right. 30 seconds on the clock. Are they all from this episode? Oh, we ran out of time in Ascension. So these these are the trivia questions that I had for Ascension. So prepare yourself. It was a couple of weeks ago. And most oh, importantly, good. are they short answer? Uh, yeah, just let me check. How much time we got on the clock four. again? Yep. Oh, Have you got five questions? It's really not, waiting it's for not an multiple answer. choice. It's not multiple choice. It's the other option. Uh, if you haven't been listening before, it's not an option. Um, essay also. Well, like Maddie said, I want an essay. Yeah, I want a multiple choice for the answer. yeah. answers. Was that Happy Gilmore one? <laughs> You're all now dumber. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> stupid thing I've ever heard in my life. All right. right. Let's go. And may God have mercy on your soul. At the end of this question. Mm. In Enemies, why did Tilk betray SG-1? Brainwashed. Correct. In Threshold, Braytac said Tilk must go through the right of what? Oh, you piece of... Um, yeah, pass. In Ascension, who did Orland say he'd never heard of? Dasala. Correct. What did Jack call the device on the alien planet in Ascension? Oh... Pass. How many times has Tilk seen Star Wars? Seven. Uh, Big and Honkin. Big and Honkin weapon. Big Honkin. And he went through the right of Malsharan. Yeah, that's just yeah, made you up. It. You it's missed clearly it. Clearly made up. Uh, Do we probably say how many times he's seen Star Wars? Nine. Nine. Yeah. Nine. And a great Tilk corrected where him. Where he's like, uh, Tilk has seen it eight times. To- Nine. Yeah. Like he was so excited. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and what did what did Jack call the weapon? Yeah, Reese got that big, big and hunk and space ah, gotcha. gun. Big hunk and space space gun. Omar Dasali got the right the right of mouse around. Yeah. So anyway, this is what Daniel Jackson thinks of you. Oh, Reese, what? your father made you wrong. You stupid son of a bitch. <laughs> So Second. excited for this. I can't wait till this episode actually <laughs> arrives. It's been so much fun. I hope you forget to put it in. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone will be like, "What the." F-? We realise like two episodes later. Oh my god, we forgot about it. <laughs> All right, that's episode ninety four of Get Into Gate. We will be back next week. Episode ninety five. We're going to be talking about Rite of Passage. A uh, little hint for you, Reese. Cassandra. It's going to be a well tough said. one, guys. Well said. I hope, no. she, I hope she dies in this episode. Awesome, it's going to be a tough one. So cool. Hope she dies of gonorrhea and burn. <laughs> yeah. Is this the little chick from Bane? Yeah, bro. Same chick? Yeah, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I remember she, you saying. She's so mm. cool. It's the last time we see Cassandra, though. So he's, you can just make it through this episode and we never have to deal with Cassandra yeah, ever again. So Unless you watch 1969. <laughs> 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 Until then, you can check out all of our old podcasts. Just search Get Into Gate, a Stargate podcast on your favorite podcasting channel. You can uh, follow, share, like, subscribe to our social pages on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Search Get Into Gate there as well. If uh, you want to be like Ashley O and uh, The Pooch and a few other of our listeners supporting the show, joining the show, contributing to the show, jump on to patreon.com forward slash get into gate for some exclusive extras. We have uh, a couple of extra podcasts that go up there during the week as well, some behind the scenes gear uh, some videos Give which aways. you might want to watch before you watch the video and afterwards you're like oh might have seen too much there but you can check all that out on <laughs> patreon.com forward yeah. slash get into gates and also 
jump on, give us an iTunes review. That helps to get the name out, get everyone uh, listening to us. And also, uh, I've had a couple new ones, so I'll, I'll read them out in our hairy mailbag. It is, it is starting to fill up. Oh, it's like yeah. it's like when you're carrying a full bucket. You're like, it can't move too fast because it's going to go <laughs> over the edges. It's not so, it's not falling over the edge. We uh, we do have there. a couple of new patrons to welcome to the team as well. Oh, uh, the first one. The name seems a little bit suspicious. It's, oh God, why did we give it? No, to you? no, it's fine. It's this? fine. Well, you guys tell me that I have to because none of you want to do no, it. Why do you have a Why do you have a go at them before you read the name? <laughs> no, well, it's Christopher. This- it's a fight. I can pronounce it. It's Christopher Williams. But is that the love child of Christopher Judge and Peter Williams? Like, Ooh, that's Teal and so. mm. We could be so. I lucky. feel like that's like a that's like a pen name. Or so he's I don't like know if... legally changed his name, and he's just picked his two favorite actors that's from cool. SG One. That's cool. Man, like, really make I sad. suppose it's better than Peter Judge, isn't it? Not yeah, as good okay. as Tilk Apophis. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the other one to to welcome as well is oh Jesus, uh, Nina Nina Tamburello. Tamburello now it. Tamburello. You even ruined Nina. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Next time, one of you is doing it. Just pre-read it. And, uh... I did, mate. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't have said that. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought so. Oh, all right. Well, next time you do a has recent paying attention, you're getting f***ing nailed when okay. you stumble on a word, mate. Oh, come on, oh, mate. I've got 30 seconds. <laughs> the clock's on. Let's put the clock on and you can read it's that for in the pod. seconds. <laughs> all in the name of comedy, mate. Uh, Just like, not my mental health. Like Reese. Climbed into me. Well, stop heaps. taking it personally. We want you to fail, but not in life. Just yeah. on the, just on the mic, just on the show. The podcast is my life, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, myself, Mitch underscore Lewis on Twitter and Instagram. Maddie at High Pitch Maddie. Brendan. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Reese. <laughs> I'm at the Flying Gibson. And Lincoln. Your real name is Link Lewis. What are you on Twitter and Instagram? Thank you, Mitchell. <laughs> the at Link. <laughs> Just change your handle, mate. Just change your handle to at the Link Lewis and be fine. <laughs> what a narcissistic prick you would look like if, you know, so far you've been Link underscore Lewis. Now you're, what, now 100,000 or something on Instagram? Then you change it to the Link Lewis. Yeah. Everyone's like, get yeah. your handle. Just to differentiate it, yourself Ooh, from all those fake Lincoln. Lincoln. Wanker. <laughs> Just to differentiate yourself from all those fake Lincoln Lewis Instagram yeah. accounts out there. Because the only I'm reason I sure. put the Brendan Gibson is because I'm a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Confirm. I can confirm that. I've done the legwork. work. I can confirm that you are a f***head. The only reason I put on the air. flying on Gibson air. is because Brendan's a f***head. <laughs> I can confirm that as well. Get into geek.com.